what is infective endocarditis? It's basically inflammation or infection of the endocardial lining of the heart. So the endocardium of the heart is nothing but a, a squamous epithelial tissue, which is which lines the surface of the endocardial surface or inner surface of the heart, uh, the chambers, and also the heart walls. So whenever there is any inflammation or infection to this surface by any microbial pathogen, it is called as infective endocarditis. So normally, uh, in, uh, <clears throat> in normal patients, the endocardial tissue or the endothelium is resistant to uh, these infections because this endothelium constantly secretes nitric oxide and prostacyclins, which prevents the platelet aggregation so that uh, preventing from formation of any aggregates in the heart valves or and in the heart chamber so that any there won't be any uh, colonization of the organisms within the uh, these platelet aggregates. So whenever there is a breach in this endothelium, maybe due to various reasons, like for example, any uh, underlying rheumatic heart disease or congenital heart diseases or any prosthetic valve or any prosthetic material in the heart, any of the, for that matter, if the, by any means, is if there is any breach in the endothelium of the heart, causing disruption of the endothelium or any destruction of the valves, it leads to uh, platelet aggregates, which is called as non-microbial thrombotic embolize, NBTE. So that's usually non-infective. And whenever there is an opportunity for this uh, blood, our like blood, bloodstream infection or septicemia or any opportunity for a, uh, the uh, infection to set in this uh, non-NBTs um, emboli, uh, the organisms will accumulate in the blood platelet aggregates and then they multiply and then they can cause a life-threatening infection and uh, it is called as infective necrotis. So let us go uh, into the details of this uh, inf in infective necrotis. So basically, uh, it can have an acute or subacute presentation. Uh, the acute presentation is caused by a more virulent organisms like Staphylococcus aureus, and uh, uh, so, so Staph aureus is a very uh, the patient will have a very sick. <clears throat> they present with acute heart failure. They present with acute, uh, like a severe MR, acute severe MR. Yeah, they'll be usually in a uh, febrile. They'll be they'll be very toxic. So these uh, acute conditions carry a very high mortality rate and they will be, uh, they'll be very toxic. And we have to uh, intervene very early in, in the matter of like in the acute conditions in the, in the form of uh, immediate surgery. And in subacute cases, usually the patient present in a non-specific symptoms like uh, uh, myalgia, low-grade fever, uh, they, they have indolent course. Uh, they can sometimes present with the uh, end organ uh, uh, embolization symptoms like uh, CVA, means uh, cerebral vascular accidents or splenic abscess or abscess somewhere else. So usually this will be caused by the less uh, virulent organisms like Streptococcus viridanco. And uh, as I told you uh, earlier, there should be some pre predisposing factors for this infective endocarditis to de develop whenever there is underlying uh, pathology within the body. So the main, the three main types of predisposing factors are uh, been identified. So that is condition that causes seeding of these microorganisms into the blood, that is bacteremia or fungemia, or for any, any, any procedure or anything for that matter, that I'll come into the details later. And underlying heart disease, as I told you, that if there is a, for, that, for example, any rheumatic heart, chronic rheumatic heart disease causing um, while stenosis or regurgitation or mitral prolapse causing severe MR, which is in, in turn causing any disruption of the endothelial tissue of the, in the left atrium or the mitral valve, and any congenital heart diseases. Which, uh, so I will come into the details of these things one by one. And impaired host defenses like uh, any leukemia, lymphomas, or any immunocompromised conditions. So if you look at the condition that causes seeding of these microorganisms into the blood, that is bacteremia or fungemia. Uh, so the procedures which involves the dental, uh, the dental procedures, usually our mouth is a uh, source of many organisms uh, for that matter, especially the streptococcus viridans group. Usually it is a normal common cell. So whenever there is any, uh, 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 there was whenever there is any dental process carried out without any proper antimicrobial prophylaxis, sometimes the blood organisms can spread into the blood, the blood and they can have a bacteremia and in, in turn they can go and affect the already under uh, those 
bacterial NBT is, uh, as I told you, non-bacterial thrombotic emboli within the heart. And sometimes the Staphylococcus aureus is a normal skin commensal. So you know, we IV drug abusers where they share the needles from one person to other other persons, so they can transmit the organisms and they can you know inject the blood, uh, organisms which is uh, contaminated uh, by the needles into the into the bloodstream and then that way they can have a bacteremia and infections like genitourinary tract. Uh, where you know unhygienic process, uh, procedures like uh, unhygienic uh, uh, techniques of catheterization or cystoscopy, where there is if there is any breach in the early sterility, they can have a bacteremia or infections, and sometimes you know they can have a, a skin abscess like boils or carbuncles or respirated, uh, lower respiratory tract infections uh, causing the lung abscess, and then in turn having a for it, all these things are uh, various conditions which can. Uh, there is a possibility of bacteria or fungi, which can in turn be a high risk for infected hepatitis. So, uh, as I told you earlier itself, uh, the underlying heart condition is uh, again one of the predisposing factor for the infected hepatitis to develop. For example, a rheumatic heart disease or mitral heart prolapse, or any patient is having congenital heart disease patients like VSD, ventricular septal defect, or PDA, or fibrotic stenosis, pulmonary stenosis, or bicuspidiotic valves. Acquisition of aorta, or sephritic valvular disease, or atherosclerotic valvular uh, disease, or floppy mitral valve like mitral valve prolapse with the age-related uh, myxomatous changes in the leaflets can cause prolapse. So any of these underlying conditions can cause breach in the endothelium of the heart, which in turn attracts the platelets for the platelet to aggregate in uh, surface of the endothelium, where the organisms or the microbes, uh, microbial organisms can. Uh, settle over those uh, back plated aggregates and then they can colonize and they can cause various destructive uh, lesions depending upon the virulence of the organism. And then uh, if you look at the impaired host defenses like uh, le leukemias or lymphomas, our patient is on any immunotherapy or cytotoxic chemotherapy medications, or the patient is a retroviral uh, who is an antiretroviral therapy or immunotherapy, those patients will especially will be very high risk for developing uh, this kind of infect and hepatitis. And most of the patients, more than 50 to 60 percent of the cases, usually the uh, damage valves will be caused, the, the infect and hepatitis cases will be caused by the streptococcus viridans. And in 20 to 30 percent of the patients, we see staphylococcus aureus, where it can, the staphylococcus aureus is very, very uh, bad pathogen. It can affect a healthy or uh, normal tissues also, normal valves also. And, uh, of course, the deformed valves also will carry a very high risk. And in IV drug abusers, again, the Staphylococcus aureus will be the common organisms we see uh, because it's a skin commensal, so we can easily uh, get into the blood and can cause uh, uh, infected endocarditis. And prostatic endocarditis is most commonly caused by coagulous negative Staphylococcus, uh, Staphylococcus, or it's also called Staphylococcus epidermitis. And uh, the other group of organisms called uh, hazard group. Whenever there is a hazard group of organisms, like uh, it's usually caused by the genitourinary or gastro, like bowel uh, uh, sepsis. So the organisms in the hazard group in, in, uh, involved includes the Haemophilus, Acinobacterium, Actinobacillus, Cardiobacterium, and Echinella and Kingella. And uh, less common organisms include gram negative bacilli and fungi. In 10% patients, we don't even, you know, culture negative organ endocarditis we see most of the time, either it's because of the uh, improper antibiotic therapy or um, uh, patient, uh, the blood, the time of uh, collection of the blood sample, uh, it, might, they might have collected after the uh, patient has been started on uh, antibiotics. So sometimes you may not even be able to find out the organism. Or sometimes a slow growing organism will be there, uh, rare, like Burkholderi or something like that, where we don't, uh, they don't grow very fast. So you classify them as a no uh, culture negative endocarditis. So, as I told you, the pathogenesis involves basically a disruption of the endothelium of the heart. So, whenever there is a disruption of the endothelium, the, endo the platelets will get attracted and they can form the clumps. And those plated uh, clumps were hold by the collagen, which forms a, a non-bacterial thrombotic emboli. And whenever there is a bacteremia, because of those mentioned causes earlier, 
these are bacteria can come and settle on these plated aggregates, which in turn multiply and proliferate, and they can have a infected endocarditis. And in turn, they can uh, produce emboli, septic emboli, uh, causing multiple abscess in various parts of the body, like brain abscess, splenic abscess, or abscess elsewhere. And sometimes, you know, they can uh, be more virulent organisms. I told, as I told you, like Staphylococcus aureus, they can have a valve, valve and perivalvular destruction, causing a root abscess, aortic root abscess, or mitral valve root, uh, mitral valve annular abscess. They can produce. That all depends on the virulence of the organism again. So, if you look at the location of the uh, lesions, I'll come to this pathology later. If you look at the location of the lesions, usually, if it is if it is involving the semilunar valves, the most commonly affected valves are aortic and mitral valves. So, if the semilunar valves like aortic and pulmonary valves are involved, the ventricular aspect of the leaflets are involved, and whenever there's a, this uh, mitral or tricuspid valves are involved, the atrial aspect of the uh, valve valvular surfaces are involved. So if you look at the pathology uh, of this uh, vegetation, so usually it can vary from a millimeters to few centimeters in size, and they can have a fungating growth or a polypedal growth or a flat, they can be flat or sometimes heel vegetation we see, and it will be a little greenish and irregular sh shape and it will be friable actually. And, uh, Acute condition, whenever there is acute to infect to endocarditis, the vegetation, the size of the vegetation should be more bulkier and it will be more fragile. And um, in subacute, it will be lesser uh, in size, in small in size. Or those who are adequately treated with antibiotics, the size will maybe may vary. And uh, microscopic will consist of a three zones. The outer zone consists of a eosinophilic material uh, composed of fibrin and platelets. Underneath this layer, there's a basophilic zone containing the colonies of the bacteria. And the deeper zone consists of a non-specific inflammatory reaction.